standing as you are comfortable. We're going to sing a new song together this morning. I promise the words are very easy, so I know you'll catch on. So uh, we invite you to sing this out with us. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
wherever you are on your journey friends whatever you've brought here with you this morning you are seen you are wanted here and you are welcome here so welcome to mosaic on this Easter morning um, there is still room up in the front I know nobody wants to do that but if you're like feeling like there's not a seat for you back there looking at you Liz um, there are still like two uh, rows up front if you want to come up here. I invite you to remain standing as you're comfortable and keep singing with us. You fed the hungriest among us. You turned the water into wine. the tables in the temple so that I could get inside.
invite you to participate in this Easter liturgy with us. The words um, will be up on the screen. The bottom bold part will be the part that we want you to say with us. Oh, <laughs> it's me first. This morning, we take in the colors and the sounds of spring. Baby birds crack out of their shells. Squirrels run through the newly grown grass. Each budding flower already contains its own death and resurrection. The Creator God has shown us that the old will fall away and the new will sprout forth. Alleluia, our hearts awaken from a dormant winter. On Friday, we wore funeral clothes, but today we lift our faces to the sun in celebration of life. No matter where we might be in our story, we see ourselves reflected in the story of Christ. We may be in our own Friday, but Sunday will come. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Love has endured. Today, we remember our own role in this story of life. We are Easter people. We must continue to roll away the stones of this world. Christ has no body now but ours. As we move through the world in love, may we lift each person from their tomb. May each seed that has been planted finally break forth from the ground and into the light. Hallelujah. We follow the example of Christ to bring new life here and now. Where, O oh death, is your sting? When the world cried out for death, vengeance, and suffering, Christ saw a people of fear and laid down in love. He buried fear with his broken body. When Christ rose, he lifted up courage and strength in his spirit. In following Christ, instead of fear, we will cry out in love. We open ourselves to the promise of resurrection. Alleluia. Alleluia. We, we sing, sing a, a new song, song today, today, a song, song of, of love. love. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? God of creation, we look to the past, to the stories that have been told about you, God, and we are remembered that you are the unchanging God of old. But when we look around today, God, we see you in the new. We see that you are rolling away the stones in our lives. God, we see that you are making new things possible. God, we see that you make beautiful things from the dust of our lives. God, this morning we give thanks for the ways that you have revealed yourself to us through creation. God, in the dark winter, you are the light that we look to. In the spring, you are the new life budding forth. God, your love shows us that we can be resurrected ourselves. God, that there is nothing that can stop us from growing into your love. This morning we give thanks for a community that reminds us that we are part of your creation, that we are part of your story, and that the story is not done being written. God, we lift our eyes and we set our sights on a future, nothing like we have ever seen. God, may our hands and our voices be yours in this world as we work to be the Easter people. God, we give thanks for all the ways that your love works in our lives. Now let us lift our voices together to say the prayer that we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Let's try that again. Christ is risen. Okay, that's kind of convincing, but let's do it one more time. Christ is risen. 
Okay, I'll take that one. That was the best one yet. So welcome to First United Methodist Church to this service of Mosaic. If this is your first time to visit, we hope you sense the warm welcome that's yours. And if you're a second, third timer or regular, we are so delighted you're here. Uh, Modern Bad did an excellent job. Lizzie did an excellent job of uh, kind of covering the themes of our scripture and our sermon, I trust will inform uh, the words that I speak and the scripture we read. I'm Pastor Don. Um, we started this week, some of you remember, with a palm processional, you know, worship and a song and praise and um, followed by egg extravaganza, our uh, neighbors uh, celebrating a billion eggs and over a hundred uh, children from all of our community uh, and for the brave-hearted, a photo with the bunny, uh, socially distanced, of course. Um, it's, it's huge head, right? So, um, and hi, Sebastian. So, um, from there, we walk through the stations uh, for Monday, Thursday, at remembering Christ's final meal with his followers. And then on Good Friday, we plumbed the madness and the tragedy of a Christ crucified. And here we are on this glorious Easter morning. Uh, this side of the cross, resurrection offers us a, a whole new identity as God's Easter people, as our, our modern band reminded us. Reading to you from Revelation 21, verses 1 through 5, it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more and mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write these words for they are trustworthy and true. Will you pray with me? God, may we feel the warm embrace of your love on this sacred day. May the glory of Jesus' resurrection remind us that with you nothing is impossible or without hope. Amen. So a, a theologian from the 60s paraphrased our scripture this way. I see skies of blue, clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. That somehow sounds better with backup, but the colors of the sky so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. Now stay with me because we're almost there, okay? I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They'll learn so much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. These uh, joyful and celebratory words capture both the hopefulness and the promise of our reading from Revelation. The word revelation or apocalypsis in the original language literally means laying bare or making naked. The book of Revelation has more hidden Easter eggs in it than the Texas Rangers championship ring, revealing, hey, you saw the commercial about that. Anyways, the ongoing reality, making clear the ongoing reality of God's new making work, a kind of divine reset of the creation. Heaven and earth are remade into something altogether new, different, even better. God's love and God lives among us, death, grief, tears, uh, sadness are no more. Now, I've spoken before about how in the New Testament the term basileia, often translated as God's kingdom, um, is the word Jesus uses to describe the coming of God's love and God's life-giving presence among us. Well, apocalypsis, apocalypsis, or revelation, sees this new reality from the backside, says our reading, as after it streaks by. And now we are being invited to live into its fullness here on earth as it is in heaven. This new reality is in stark contrast to the reality uh, described by Amy Lissinger, who lives uh, as a disabled bodied person. Um, as she wrote in last week's Lent devotional, it's frustrating knowing it's not supposed to be 
this way, that people aren't supposed to go without care. We aren't supposed to die alone or to have to prove our worthiness to be treated as humans. People with disabilities aren't supposed to be seen as strains on resources or permanently fight for crisis care, and, and yet we are. The fact disabled body people have to voice these concerns to begin with should call us to repent as a society. This new heaven and this new earth God promises us looks so very different from this broken, mixed up, polarized, callous world we live in, one that has largely embraced a worldview where self-interest trumps love of neighbor. Says Apocalypsis, Revelation, this kind of world is, is ending. Or as Pastor David put it at the youth-led sunrise service this morning, take comfort, but don't get comfortable. According to uh, church tradition, uh, the writer of Revelation is Apostle John, exiled on the island of Patmos, only water in every direction as far as the eye can see. That's what islands are, right? John is caught up in a vision of a future yet to come. And what he describes while in places sounds you know, more like movies like Dune or Mad Max, John's vision ends with a, in a much different place. Um, a heaven and earth reboot. This new world God creates is a place where power and privilege of the power and privilege of this age is no more. I mean, imagine a world with no political ads or politicians. Heaven on earth, right? All replaced by a new rule of life where wrongs are made right, justice and mercy reign, and death and mourning are a thing of the past. Uh, just reading to you from the message translation, it says, look, look, God has moved into the neighborhood, making a home with us, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death is gone for good. Tears gone, crying gone, pain gone, all the first order of things gone. Look, I'm making everything new. Uh, you know, as a church, we don't subscribe to the idea that following Jesus is simply throwing your hands up in surrender to the inevitable, watching helplessly from the sideline as the, the world goes to hell in a handbasket. That's as my grandpa Henry used to put it. Besides, how can you, we honestly and authentically pray for God's basileia, God's coming among us, if we don't live in a way that contributes to the fullness of God's coming among us, of God's arrival? This is not nationalism where self-interest guides our decisions as a people or as a nation. Rather, it's learning to love God and your neighbor wholeheartedly, whether that neighbor is across the street or all the way across the planet. It's learning to live together with people of every language, tribe, people, and nation, Revelations 5-9, creating community where all are welcomed and all are wanted, a place where people are firm for their gifts and their presence, and where grace is the rule for life in this family. This is God's vision of a new world order. Just as Jesus has totally reframed our understanding of sin, repentance, and forgiveness when he describes the greatest commandment being to love God and neighbor, fulfilling all the law and the prophets, he says. In other words, it's all about love. It's all about love. It's not about shame or guilt or judgment. It's about restoring healthy relationships and creating healthy community. So um, I grew up going to the beach, living a mere 30 minutes drive uh, from Long Beach, California. And uh, when my children were young, uh, Clary and Chris, uh, my wife and I took them uh, to see our family on the West Coast and spent a day on the beach. It was the first time our adopted son, Chris, had ever been to the beach. And we plotted out into the waves as I held his little hand um, because Chris was small enough and the waves strong enough to, you know, knock him off balance. And um, we stood there in the surf as wave after successive wave crashed at our feet. At times, Chris would lose his balance, and I'd pull him up to keep him from being pulled under by the current. And each time I'd lift him up, he'd giggle and, and, and squeal with delight, shivering in the cold water excited by the experience and ready to plant his feet firmly so that he's ready for the next wave. 
And for me, you know, this memory is, is so vivid. It's such a vivid imagery of God's grace where we are held tightly by God, so tightly that when life knocks us off our feet, we are kept from being pulled under. My son is now 26 years old and built like a brick house. Some of you know what that's like, right? Have a child that like that. But he will always be my mijito, my little son, even when the day comes. I need Chris or my mija, Clarisita, to hold on to me tightly lest I fall down. All this is to say a world without the ocean, to me, eh, it just sounds pretty lame. Makes me wonder, what is it about the sea that is so inconsistent with God's plan for a new heaven and a new earth? As we learned a few weeks ago, the Old Testament Hebrew word for water comes from the root word meaning chaos. Water is a symbol of chaos in our scripture library, of uncontrolled tempest. Chaos is unpredictability, a container ship plowing uncontrollably into a bridge. Chaos is a shooter walking into a public venue. Chaos is illness striking when least expected. A a global pandemic forcing a worldwide shutdown. Chaos is our worst fears realized. The threat of chaos is ingrained in the institutional memory of the Hebrew people where the sea is experienced as an unpredictable, uncontrollable, even destructive force of nature that can swallow up a whole world in one cataclysmic event. As I sang as a child in vacation Bible school, God told Noah to build him an archie archie. That's deep theology, I know. But in this new world, in this new world, God speaks and chaos, it subsides. The colors of the rainbow are so pretty and the sky are also on the faces of people going by. God is at work creating a world free of fear where hate and grief and death no longer exist. So yes or no, are not the places you've felt most safe also the places you've felt most loved? The challenge before us is to help create these safe places in every venue of our life, home, family, work, social and communal life, friendships, church, work that God is already engaged in and, but wants our cooperation. Take comfort, but don't get comfortable. Practice living God's love and God's presence, and you'll become an extension of God's transforming grace. The safest places I experience are when the people who love me are, are holding on to me. Revelation is painting this Edenic picture of a garden of calm and safety and provision and protection and peace, the bright blessed day and the dark sacred night. Last week at at Rivera Elementary School, I read a book about peace, peace, to Miss Grubb's first grade class. Um, After the story, I asked the question, so what is peace? And a little girl raised her hand and said, it's quiet. I replied, it's quiet? She said, yes. Yes. And she explained, mom always says she needs some peace and, and some quiet. I get that. And yet it says in Genesis, even Adam, hear the noise made by God walking through the garden at the time of the evening breeze. I mean, it turns out peace can be noisy as well. It has always been God's desire to create a home for us where we can be at home with God. No need to walk on eggshells. So I spoke with my daughter recently. She received a a notice from her property manager that her rent is increasing another $300. That's after an increase the previous year of $200 a month, a total of $500 a little over a year. To say that paying for housing is challenging for many is a a huge understatement. It's getting harder and harder for people to afford housing, and not just young adults. I mean, to quote the Department of Health and Human Services, the fastest-growing age group Experiencing homelessness is older adults, comprising nearly half of the homeless population. This is why so many of us were were excited, so excited about the possibility of our church doing affordable housing, a plan that's been put in the warming oven since interest rates have spiked. 
I mean, you and I know a home is so much more than a shelter. A home, well, it's a place of belonging. It's a place of love and, and healing, a place for creating family. Apocalypsis, Revelation goes way beyond, we'll leave a line on for you. Here, the one on the throne says, see, God's home is among mortals and will dwell with them. I mean, this takes God's withness to a whole new level. With God, there is no longer anything to fear. The, the risen Christ is a portal for God's new-making work in the world in which God creates a home, not just for us, but for all people to be at home with God where we can experience wholeheartedness together. Just as we are called to love God with our entire being, mind, body, soul, spirit, we are loved by God wholeheartedly. In a relationship of holistic shalom, of God's peace, we can discover the healing power of community and love and healthy relationships and restoration. I mean, this Easter, we are celebrating the living Christ who is noisily among us and whose resurrection makes all who welcome him Easter people. This side of the cross, this side of the empty tomb, there's new life. God has made a home with us. This is a life-shifting paradigm that invites us on a journey to experience this wonderful world in a whole new way. As Galatians 2, uh, verses 19 through 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself, who loved me and gave himself for me. And the question is, are we there yet? Are we there yet? As you may know, every year, uh, Lent, FUMC Denton adopts a home for our church to work on as part of our commitment to be God's heart here in the heart of the city. And this last year, this, this year, our Lent rebuild has been the home of Sylvia Hernandez, a member of a Jesus Fuente community, who does not have the resources or the skill set to do these repairs herself. And so, so far, we have demoed, rewired, and replumbed. We have sheetrock, cocked primed and painted walls, ceilings, and trim work. We have hung new ceiling fans, ordered new cabinets, located an oven cooktop. All this with the help of nearly 20 volunteers fueled by coffee, donuts, tamales, and a whole lot of love. And while the project has yet to be finished, I wanted you to see some of the progress that we've made. And soon we'll show you the finished project uh, when we hand the keys back to Sylvia. You see, resurrection can be experienced in all sorts of different ways. For me, it looks like beloved community. I mean, people coming together to make each other's lives better. And when we care for one another and love on one another, we are all better for it. Loving God and our neighbor wholeheartedly is a, a beautiful expression of resurrection life in the here and not yet fullness of God's coming among us. There is power and healing in faith and the love of others that helps not only create community, but it helps to heal and restore broken community by bringing the disparate parts back together into full and healthy relationship, lifting up the whole community in the process. That's the amazing healing power of beloved community, and it's waiting for you right here. Just a reminder that next Sunday we'll begin an eight-week worship series titled Life's Big Questions, addressing questions such as what is the meaning of life and why God. Um, we need your help. There are boxes around here, around our campus, and little three-by-five cards. You're invited to grab one of those three-by-five cards and write a question you have about faith or life um, for our, one of our preachers to address. And I hope that you'll take the opportunity to do that. Drop it in one of the boxes. And uh, you never know, your question, just, just make it chosen. Will you pray with me? God of resurrection life, send us out into the world as followers of Jesus, seeking the loving, just, and free world you imagine for all people. Amen. Friends, we'll come now to our time of offering and if it is on your heart to give to the work of this church, 
this morning. There's two ways you can do that this morning. You can um, place an offering in an offering basket as it comes by your row in a little bit. Or um, you can visit fumcgen10.com slash give. And if you filled out a connection card, I'd invite you to place that in the basket as well. And I want to remind you or tell you for the first time um, that our Easter offering every year supports a particular mission or project. And this year, our Easter offering is supporting um, the Jerry Savuto Rescue Center for Girls um, in Kenya. And this is um, a place where over 40 <laughs> girls live who have escaped from dangerous living situations. And so our offering this morning is supporting um, repairs and um, kind of operational costs for that really important um, home for these girls. We're gonna sing one more song together and this is called Still Rolling Stones. And um, we were, Crystal and I were talking the other day about how we like treat it like an Easter song because it's talking about the Easter story, but this is um, a song, this is an idea for, for us for always. God is always moving in our lives and so I want us to remember that this morning. The, the offering baskets are going to be coming by, but if you would like to stand anyways, you are invited to stand and sing with us if you would like to. Out of the shadows, bound for the gallows, a dead man walking. To love came calling. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Six feet under. I thought it was over. An answer to prayer. The voice of a savior. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Rise up. All at once, I came alive. This beating heart is over.
Before we go, we want to let you know about a few ways that um, you can get more involved in the life of this church. So we're going to tell you about five things real quick. <laughs> We're going to split it up because it's five things. So tomorrow night, um, we're doing pub theology at Miss Angeline's at 730. Um, the topic that night is like a Mulan song quote, um, I'll make a man out of you. But it's we're talking about positive masculinity in the Bible. And so if y'all want to join for that, it's open to everybody. 730, Miss Angeline's tomorrow night. And then this Wednesday, April 3rd, we're going to have a community dinner. And this is just like a time to come hang out, maybe meet somebody you haven't met before. So this Wednesday at six o'clock in Miller Center, it's like a, a bring your own dinner situation. So like drive through somewhere, bring your food, bring your family, bring whoever, and we're just gonna have like a, a family dinner tonight, this Wednesday. Yeah, and then next Sunday, um, our Intro to Social Principles class is beginning at 10 a.m. in room 108. So this will be a four week like class where we're learning about the 2024 social principles of the United Methodist Church. So basically that means that we're really looking into what we decided that we really care about, our church's values are for social holiness. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you are very invited. And then two Sundays from now, I'll remind you about this one again next week. Um, the youth has invited us all as a church to do a mission night together. And so last year, this is what, Last year, this was the 10,000 meal challenge. This year, the 20,000 meal challenge. Um, Y'all did such a great job last year. We just are like leveling that right up. So two Sundays from now, the 14th at 5.30, we're all gonna meet over in the gym to um, assemble meal kits with, we're partnering with Kids Against Hunger. Um, and so this is absolutely everyone's invited. We do need you to register if you would like to come. So you can do that at fumcdenton.com slash events. And then on April 19th, we want to let you know that our uh, children's ministry is hosting a kids night in event. And kids night in also means parents night out. So you can bring your kids, drop them off. We're going to have a spring themed great time. Um, youth are free. Kids, I can't, I think kids are like $20 a kid or $50 family max. And there's pizza and crafts and all kinds of great, awesome, wonderful things. So just put that in your calendar, April 19th. Thank you all for being together on this Easter. I hope it's been meaningful to you. It's been meaningful for us, for you all to be here. I'm going to invite you to stand uh, as we send you out with a, a blessing. I keep thinking of, of, of that what to me makes sense, this, this knowledge that the places that we feel most safe are the places we feel most loved, meaning, you know, no walking on eggshells. And how Christ calls us to love, you know, God and neighbor and how we know what that looks like because we've experienced it uh, in our relationship with God, perhaps in our relationship with one another. And it's not always easy. It's not, honestly, it's not always safe, but it is, it's the better way. It's the only way I know. Um, and um, I just pray that um, something that was sung, something that was spoken, or something that was said by me um, will nudge you a little bit closer to understanding that you really are a beloved child of God. and that you are worth God's heart and that God holds you there waiting for you to discover that's exactly where you are. Happy Easter. <laughs>